worked there for four years and um, lots of times I've um, used IP spoofing uh, because the uh, customers put us on a network that is not allowed to go anywhere. So uh, we have to spoof our IP addresses to get connections. Uh, first I have some free stuff, if anyone is interested. There you are. Uh, these slides, uh, I mailed them to DT. I hope he will put them out on some web page somewhere. I will not. But DT, I will mail him that he have to. <laughs> I'm trying to um, see on my computer at the same time. What we will talk to you about today, I will take, say some first, and uh, then we'll have some definition of spoofing, it's very short, one slide, and uh, Linux configuration, how to set up Linux, it's three lines, and it's sniffing, it's, uh, it will be some, uh, some things about passive network mapping, because it's a cool way to, to find out uh, which uh, host is up and what service is running that you can't access from your normal IP address. Then we'll talk about uh, how to set up uh, IP spoofing with a source routing. So we will have to, uh, some slides about source routing first. And then it's vanilla IP spoofing how easily it is set up and then an ending and uh, there will be time to get to the, the Cult of Dead Cow show but uh, it will be a hard time to get in there you know? <laughs> we will discuss spoofing there are so many people that thinks that IP spoofing is a, something very hard to do, and it's very difficult to set up, but I will show you how easily it is done with, with full connections, and I will not uh, uh, take up examples of session hijacking, it's you making your own connections, full own connections with spoofing. Yeah, yeah, I give you one minute. No, it says <laughs> it says that IP spoofing is used to to go through filtering routers or firewalls. Yes, so it's a rule-based router firewall that says like A is not allowed to go to B. But C is okay. I change my iPad address to C. It's okay, and and it it's 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 really okay. It sounds easy, and it is easy. That's that's the point I'm 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 going to give her, because yeah, I will come to the point later. If if you have if you have any questions, it's it's. Um, we have some questions at the end, but it's, it's, it's so simple, so if you ask a question, uh, maybe people will start looking at you. So. <laughs> it's a way to get rid of questions. Yeah. 
So, how do you configure your, your Linux box? Well, we use this Slackware. We like it because it's simple. And uh, you have to do everything on it. To, to You have to uh, download all the libraries by yourself and so on. But when you got it running, it, it's perfect. In the kernel, um, you have to enable IP forwarding if it's not done already. All hackers uses it. It's uh, one way to, if you are redirects or something, it's, it's the easiest way to, to make everything, well, easy. <laughs> and um, the next one is um, uh, the, default is the, the default of IP drop source routed frames is enable. It's it uh, drops all routed frames, the Linux box. You have to disable that option. So your, your computer is vulnerable to source routed frames. And IP aliasing. It's like you have lots of IP addresses on your network card. E ETH0 colon zero, for example. That's it. Um, now we are sitting on an untrusted network. We are C.3, and with Cphone, it's a very good passive network mapper. It's uh, by Subterrain Security Group. Is, are they here today? No, they're drunk. <laughs> um, you can see traffic with Cphone. It's just a passive na network mapper. You just starts it, and it will show up that E.2 have port 80 open because someone is surfing to that box. In this example, it's B.2. Okay. Now we know it's uh, port 80 is open on that one. When we try to connect it from C.3, we don't get any answers. Why? Yeah, probably C.2. The router C.2 is filtering that traffic out. It just allows uh, computers on B network to reach this port on that computer. That's why we use uh, passive, network ma ne passive network mapping. It's, um, it's a very good key to, to IP spoofing. Um, I have to re just write DSNF also because I love the tool and it's, it also shows if uh, B.2 makes a uh, login to E.2, it shows up and when I try to log in I don't get any connection. But uh, it's always down to TCP dump, of course, anyone use it here? And uh, it's, uh, it's for, for looking for what IP addresses that sends the package and the MAC addresses of the packages. It will become important later. So, yeah, an arrow from B.2 to E.2, nice. Good. So, five minutes and uh, half the speech is over. Because this is so easy, you, it's, 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 as I said, it's, uh, some people think it's, it's very hard to do, but after this show, you know how to do it. Why source route? What is source routing used for? Anyway, why is it enable default on the routers? Yeah, you maybe have two different ways to a network. You are A.3, I want to talk to B.3. You can go through a router A.1 on a slow, cheap line, or A.2 on a fast, expensive line. You may choose with source routing. I choose A.2 or something. I will show how it is done. And maybe you connect it to network with the same network number. It can be done. Uh, but the router A.1 don't know which network who will choose. But I may choose on, in my network packages. But not many users 
source routed frames today. Uh, hackers do, and it's. <laughs> I'll show you now. If you if you are A.2 here, and the rule in the router A.1 says A is not allowed to go to network B. You just pick B.3 here, one IP address on the inside, and you send, you craft a package, and it goes through. It's, it's, it's simple like that. But the problem is if it just craft a package and send it, it will go back to B.3. You don't want that. You want a full connection. You don't want to do blind spoofing here or something. It's or guessing something. It's it's. I want the packages back. So, yeah. And so here's the example. Um, there's a router called C.1, and uh, it's a rule that says. E are not allowed to go to B. So I'm on I'm B.2 on this network. I just pick another address, A.2. And it's done this way. Yeah, you already have an illegal IP address, E.2. You just make another IP address on your network card with this command, and you have A.2. This is this this network is, is uh, a typical network on companies that using filtering routers to protect, uh, like a production network or something. And it's this is way how to, to get through it. You add a route, of course, that says like net A is on my network card. Thank you. And uh, then you use. Almighty Hobbits, Netcat, uh, and uh, have some switches on it, just network numbers, verbose, and I have the, the source of A.2, my spoofed IP address, and um, I choose the gateway to my legal IP address, so it's on the real network, and the destination, it's at the end here, there. The destination is E.2, port 23. So I connect from my spoofed IP address to my real IP address to myself on port 23. If you get an open here, it's working. Okay, your computer is fine. It's 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 handled source routed frames in correct way, and a good start. What you do next is uh, that. You have, of course, at always, A.2 as a spoofed address, source address, and uh, go to uh, your real interface as a, as a jump, network jump, and then to the routers, the first downstream routers IP address, E.1, port 23, if it's open, of course, and if you get to open there, uh, it is vulnerable to source routing. and it. Mostly are, and when you f then fingers the router E.1, it will show up in the who's logged in. You you you're not you don't have to log in to the router. You just have to connect to it and finger it, and it says like A.2 has a connection to it. Good. It's this router is fooled right now. So we go on and. Uh, from spoofed A.2 to my real network in interface to the first fooled downstream router to the next downstream router. Same thing, if it's open, it it's, it's believes what I'm sending. So this line will do it. That easy. You have a full connection. You can talk to POP everything, FTP, something. Uh, this, this is said in the, in the readme file of Netcat that it can be used, but it's not described how, how easily it is done. 
so people don't really I don't really understand how it's it's important to, to disable source routing in routers and uh, one more thing it's 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 important to uh, understand that all these hosts or routers had to uh, accept source routed frames of course what excuse me Yes, that is the first thing you turn off. But uh, you may. People don't. What do you do if it's not turned off? You disable. If it's turned off, what do you do if it's turned off? I will come to that. <laughs> well, it's, it's very hard. It, it, it depends on the rules, how the rules are set up. It's, it's, the question is, what do you do if it's uh, turned off? It's very hard. It's, it's hard. And uh, it depends on the rules that if it's like only this network allow or your network just deny or something, it, it's, it depends. But this is working fine in Europe, and I think it will work fine here. <laughs> so uh, here's one more thing I will show today. And we have lots of time to go to to, uh, to culture.com then. I will be there sharing. And um, here's a router called U.2. The, the, the small letters, what's called lowercase letters, they uh, uh, represent the MAC address of the, of the hosts. So I'm having MAC address B, and my IP address, legal IP address, it's U.3. I'm sitting on an untrusted network. Nobody trusts me there. They're, they're, the customers put me there when I'm going in for penetration tests. They don't want me to find anything. And the rule in, in the router says, like, if you come from A, a trusted network, but over untrusted, uh, you're allowed to go to B. And everyone else is denied. It is this rule we find too many times on filtering routers and firewalls because I will show you how it could be bypassed easily. Because if you just spoof the IP address, you craft a, a, a network package and send it to, to, the, to the destination, it will go through because I'm A.2, it says in the network, network package. It will pass the, the firewall filtering router. But when the answer come back, comes back, the, the first router, B.1, will see like, A, this package is for network A. It's behind the router U.1. It put the, the MAC address of A on that package to, and the destination IP address A.2. Got it? It will, if you, if you can easily just send packages and sniff the responses, but it will go to the router. But this is, I will, this is not fun. It, you want full connection. You want to run Nmap, Netcat, Nessus, and everything. And you don't want to just sniff the responses. So, and then the network package will be transferred to the right host. So, what? Uh, I don't. I, I really don't. Yeah, or pick, a, pick an IP address that knots up. It's, 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 it depends on the rules. If you can first shoot it down or, or pick an IP address that's not there, it's, 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 it's working most of the time, so really. Well, otherwise, you know. I don't do it, I just pick a number. And here's, here's how full connection, vanilla IP spoofing, it's done. And don't be alarmed because it's too easy. You are in Uber Hacksaw, I know, but. Um, People don't understand how easily it is done. Here's the same network. And what I do, it's uh, take my interface down 
and uh, put the new MAC address on it. I pick the same MAC address as an upstream router. You see it? And then you set my spoofed IP address as ETH0. Of course, A is on my network card. Network A is on my network card. Then I take my real IP address as a, as a next IP address on my network card, U.3, it's my legal one. I add a route. My legal network is on my network card. And uh, of course I need, I don't need, but in this example I need a default gateway, U.2. And what's more you think? Well, you have full connections now to B.2. You can run Nmap, you can run Nessus, you can run everything you want from your Linux box, and you have full connections, and you can talk to the services as you're used to. So if, you, if you're allowing people into your network, over an untrusted network, I think you will have to change that now. You know it. You are here. Well, that's the easy way to do it. Um, it's, it's, it's <laughs> uh, as I said, I hope Dark Daniel will put these slides up because you have this, uh, oh, sorry, these cool effects now. If the last man is uh, have finished, you can. Okay, sorry, <laughs> didn't work. People are taking. We have so much time, you know. I'm I'm really finished with this talk. I have some quirks to to it, some other fun stuff. Okay, three, two, yep. Switched. Yes. No problem. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 hard thing to do. There is more lots of problems to it because uh, then two two uh, network cards on the same on the same uh, network have the same MAC address and the package don't know when it passes the switch what ways it will take. Yes, it's a real big problem, but. Um, you can just give a shit about the default gateway and take every package back. You know, you can uh, you can just like, okay, I'm A. Forget the default gateway here. You know, so you have full connections. So this is a very, very, very easy way to establish full connections over if you are sitting on an untrusted network and some people are allowing other people over that network. Uh, the same attack can be done on uh, your local network. Some people on your network can just take the default gateways of your network, uh, the network's MAC address, he pick a random IP address on his network card and set it up as he's done the last slide. He can attack here uh, A.3 and if someone sniffs the network, it will come from X.1 and uh, it looks like, exactly looks the same way, it it's comes from the default gateway from the internet. So many security officers and so will like checking, why X is in our network? It's someone is hacking here. You know, so it's, it's <laughs> and who should they attack? You know, it's, I run this um, on the capture flag you know, yesterday and there are lots of machines there that make automatic attacks uh, to the to the hosts attacking them, so the, their their machines were attacking X.1 there. So, yeah, and and, is it, and that one was on the internet. Excuse me. So it will send a package. It will come back, and 
uh, it will come back to me because my, my, my network interface, my TCP IP stack will, will pick it up it because it's addressed to a.x.1, but uh, the default gateway will also pick it up and send it to the right host on the normal hub network, but uh, there are no security and switches, believe me. So, the solution is, of course, Disable source routing is a part of IP options. I don't know how it's done. You have to figure it out yourself. It's uh, default on firewalls, uh, but it's disabled. And Linux boxes, but not default on routers. Um, you have to implement spoofing protection. It's like saying, this is my inside network interface. These are the IP addresses there. If someone sends an IP address from, from the outside, I should like warn, drop, everything. Uh, don't use filter rules over untrusted network. You have understand that now, I hope. And um, you have to use some kind of VP6 something, encryption, uh, VPN something. Okay? Promise me to that now, okay? Questions? What? Uh, he says, like, it is disabled on Cisco. Yes, I heard of it. Yeah, the 12, the 12 iOS as well. Some more questions? Thank you. I will. Uh,